It's called a satanic black mass, and it's about to happen at Harvard University. The event billed as an historic reenactment. Not everybody's on board with this. Our Jared Holbrook is here to explain. Hi, Jared. Hi, Maria. The Archdiocese of Boston is upset about the event. They're hoping Harvard reconsiders. But even though it will be happening, happening on campus, it doesn't appear school administrators will be getting involved. A Harvard University student club is hosting a satanic black mass reenactment to celebrate witchcraft and satanic worship. The ritual is expected to take place at an on-campus bar May 12th, and the Harvard Extension Cultural Studies Club will be hosting. The performance will be conducted by the Satanic Temple, a group known to stir up controversy. We spoke to their leader by phone. So will part of this ritual be mocking other religious beliefs? Well, that's more of a creation of the, the religions that decry it themselves. Would that be a yes or a no? Well, it's a, it's a partial, it's a, it's, a qualified, it's a qualified yes, they're going to view it as mocking. The Archdiocese of Boston is firing back with this response. The Catholic community in the Archdiocese of Boston expresses its deep sadness and strong opposition to the plan to stage a black mass on the campus of Harvard University in Cambridge. They go on asking believers to pray for those involved in the event and that Harvard disassociates itself from the activity. Lucian Greaves says if someone is going to be offended, they don't want them participating. We don't want to throw it in their faces either. This is a, this is a closed group setting and this is something for the people who embrace it. Greaves says the reenactment will feature commentary and historical context, and at one point a host will be used. According to him, they will not use a consecrated host. No, we don't ascribe to supernatural art statements that construct is such that we bow to no God and we don't subscribe to any supernatural belief. So for us, at the end of the day, the host is just a cracker. Most students we spoke to at random say, while they may not agree, they appreciate the school's philosophy. So I have no issues against that. In fact, uh, the more open campus we have, uh, that fosters more environmental, uh, you know, an environment that's open for all. The Harvard Extension School says the school does not endorse the views or activities of any independent student organization, but we do support the rights of our students and faculty to speak and assemble freely. We also reached out to the Harvard Extension Cultural Studies Club for comment. They never got back to us. Jared Holbrook, Fox 25 News. And Jonathan, a reenactment of a satanic mass is scheduled to be held in the basement of this Harvard University building. And it has raised the question, is it education or a religious attack? Satanic worship at Harvard, a planned black mass on campus, is rubbing a lot of people the wrong way tonight. News Center 5's Mary Saladna is live in Cambridge right now with the push to stop it. Mayor? Yeah, and you know, it's just a reenactment, but some people say even that crosses a line. Leading the opposition, the Catholic Archdiocese of Boston. It's called a satanic black mass, and historically, it mocks the teachings of the Catholic Church, specifically the Catholic Mass. This Monday, a group of Harvard students is sponsoring a black mass reenactment on campus, teaming up with the New York-based Satanic Temple for the event. Many in the Catholic community argue the reenactment crosses a line. If someone was going to do a KKK reenactment or a minstrel show or something like that at Harvard, what would be the reaction of the Harvard community? I would hope the reaction would be outrage. In a statement, the Archdiocese of Boston condemns the reenactment, saying it places the participants dangerously close to destructive works of evil. The Harvard Extension Cultural Affairs Club defends the mass, saying the performance is designed to be educational and is preceded by a lecture that provides the history, context, and origin of the black mass. I think education should be about trying out all the different ideas and talking about all the issues. As long as that's done in a respectful manner, there's no problem. But Father Jim Bretzky of Boston College says it's not just Catholics who should be offended. I don't think they know the history of the Black Mass. It's extremely misogynist. It is extremely demeaning of women. Now, officials with the Harvard Extension School declined to talk to us on camera, but say while they don't endorse any one group's views, they do support students' rights to speak and assemble freely. And the club says that they will not use a concentrated host for this mass. Instead, they'll use a piece of bread. Now, in response to the Black Mass, St. Paul's Catholic Church, which is associated with Harvard University, is holding a holy hour at the same time. 
And now to a showdown over Satan at Harvard, a club planning a satanic black mass on campus. Now the controversial event setting up a battle between the Archdiocese of Boston and Harvard University. And join us Harvard Catholic Center Senior Chaplain Father Michael Drea and Harvard Catholic Student Association President Todd Jones. Father, first to you, tell me what is going on? What's the dispute? Well, Greta, as, as you know, the Black Mass is a uh, denigration of the Roman Catholic liturgy, uh, using uh, uh, the Eucharist as a, as a, a mockery and also uh, a mockery of the Blessed Virgin Mary in some aspects as well. And this, this has been around for hundreds of years. And uh, to have this satanic ritual on a campus that would seek to denigrate a, uh, the religious practice of a community, of course, has many of our students and alumni and parents and the overall Catholic community at Harvard very much alarmed by that. Todd, what do you think? You're a student there. <laughs> Excuse me? Todd, what do you think, Todd? Um, I don't know. Uh, obviously, I think it's terrible. Um, I've been really interested by the different responses that I've gotten from uh, kind of which groups of people I talk to. Um, in the Catholic community, for one, it's everybody's been very up in arms, very frustrated about it. But on the flip side, I talk to everybody on campus and, I mean, who's not Catholic, and their responses have all been either apathetic or most of them just ignorant. They just don't know what's happening. And I thought that's very interesting, um, particularly the fact that the university hasn't really officially said anything about it. But at the same time, I'm very encouraged by the, uh, the Catholic response uh, to it. We're starting up yeah. blogs. Um, we've, actually, we've actually got a little bit of a petition, if anybody watching would like to sign, stand with Harvard Catholics at wordpress.com. Um, just a petition to the university, to President Faust, to stop this from happening. You know, Father, the thing that's sort of, uh, the, the, the justification for it by this group is that there's a First, first Amendment right, uh, freedom of speech. There's also freedom of religion in that same amendment, actually comes before. Um, and, you know, I don't understand why they want to insult the Catholic Church. Now, they say it's because they want to make a point on the First Amendment. Well, if they want to make a point on the First Amendment on free speech, they can take it one step further and burn the Koran. And I can tell you there's going to be a whole, little, whole bigger different response. But they know the Catholics, you know, the Catholics are just going to be deeply insulted and they're going to be respectful back. Um, you know, that's what, what I don't understand is that, you know, why sort of the open season, you know, to do this to the Catholic religion knowing this is so painful. Well, Greta, I think, I think you're right in many ways. This is de definitely a, an act of hatred, an act of bigotry directed towards the church and towards her faithful people. And, you know, we can dwell on that. We can dwell on the negative aspects, the, the, uh, the aspects of hatred and bigotry. Or we as a community can come together and be strengthened uh, by our unity as a community and the prayer that we engage to help us move forward and to convict ourselves more to the belief that we have in the great gift that is the Eucharist, in the great gift that is the Mass that Christ has given to us, so that we can be more effective in the world and try to combat this evil with a charitable response, with a prayerful response. And that's what we're seeking to do at Harvard. Um, and that's what I'm pastorally encouraging my students uh, and my fellow priests who work with me at Harvard to engage that prayerful response with a sense of calm so that we can be rise above the evil in the world well i guess that my sort of uh, my sort of response would be is you know it's like you know is that people have a first amendment right if they if they want to make a statement they could they could make a much bigger one and they won't dare do that because of the consequences so they pick on the group that's going to be politely and prayerful back meaning uh meaning the catholic church but just because you have a right a first <laughs> amendment right doesn't mean you should do something and you know, the, you know i hope this well, group rethinks it i think i hope they redo think this but oh we all do you're anyway. exactly right, Greta, and the reality is, is that hopefully we can lead by our example to help others as well who are affected by negativity, by hatred and bigotry, uh, by our response so that the community can come together in a stronger and, way and really be united for all people of goodwill to be able and, to live their faith well without being denigrated.
And that's that's also a message in terms of you know if, of all you know all the different sorts of you know faiths and everything is that uh, it sure would be you know if we would all be a little more uh, tolerant and respectful of the First Amendment. But gentlemen, thank you. I'm gonna take the last word on that. Thank you, Greta. Thank you.